police and fire dispatch. Hi, my name's Misty. I'm calling from the Super 8 Denver Central. Um, there's this guy walking around in his underwear. Okay. Um, he seems like out of it. At half past eight. His name is Paul Egg Egley. Paul Egley appeared half past gone. I don't know if he's drunk or high or what. Adams County deputies arrived. A fight followed. 371, come to Adams Southside. And a few minutes into it, Paul Egley died. Starting CPR at 2043. I out that I had a combative um, on the south side, and that's right when the assisting officer showed up. I see Coster on top of him, and he's just telling him, you know, stop resisting. We were in the process of trying to put handcuffs on him. All right. How long after you get there do you manage to get both hands um, handcuffed? It was a matter of probably 10 seconds or so. It was all a mystery until the Adams County Coroner's Office offered this conclusion drug-induced excited delirium. 421, I need uh, medical code three parties turned uh, unresponsive. It's the same conclusion the same know. office offered the same year after Alex Gutierrez died under a pile of officers. Stop, I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. And the same theory it initially suggested after the death of Elijah McClain in 2019. Excited delirium, a potentially fatal syndrome experienced by people impervious to pain and marked by bizarre and combative behavior. It's like saying you're the reason that you're dead. Dr. Joy Carter Rush knows the term well. She spent more than three decades in forensic pathology, investigated thousands of deaths. We asked her to review the Egley and Gutierrez cases and then asked, were the coroner's conclusions correct? In my opinion, they're not. She says the mere presence of the words excited delirium on an autopsy report serves to downplay the role of law enforcement in the death. When I see the term excited delirium on a death certificate, it makes me wonder about that person's training. What else could you have written besides excited delirium? We asked Adams County Coroner Monica Brancusha Jordan for an interview. We got this instead. The standard in death investigations, the National Association of Medical Examiners, or NAME, acknowledges this diagnosis and does not dispute it. If NAME opposes the use, this office will follow accordingly. We'll get back to that. That excited delirium is not a valid medical or psychiatric diagnosis and should not be used as a cause of death. Joanna Naples Mitchell represents Physicians for Human Rights, which used this report to document close ties between the use of excited delirium in autopsies and deaths involving law enforcement. I think it's made it really challenging for families to pursue justice, and it's been extremely painful for them to feel that their loved one was blamed for their own death. Of the 139 deaths we've linked to excited delirium, all but two happened during or shortly after law enforcement restraint. And why is it that excited delirium is coming up almost exclusively in the context of restraint? It's gotta be more than a coincidence. No less than the American Medical Association and the American Psychiatric Association agree. Current evidence does not support excited delirium as an official diagnosis, says the former. Excited delirium should not be used, says the latter. We owe it to people to get it right. Dr. Deborah Pinalls represents the APA, which also urged the federal government to conduct a comprehensive nationwide investigation of deaths connected to the term. The phrase excited delirium had become more and more of a catch-all for many circumstances that were difficult to explain. The request has so far been ignored, which is why we're taking another look at the deaths of people hey, just outside yeah, the main really entrance right now. like Paul Egley. Hispanic male across the street from the medical center. And Alex Gutierrez. Stop, I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. And Elijah McClain. And they are hardly alone. Of the 139 deaths in our database, nearly 100 have excited delirium listed on their autopsy reports. It's why Dr. Carter Rush told us this about the group known as NAME when we interviewed her. I'm hoping that the National Association of Medical Examiners will take the responsible position of saying this term is not valid. Weeks later, after our repeated attempts to get someone, anyone from NAME to address this issue, we received this statement that said NAME can no longer endorse use of the term excited delirium. A big development, one that set off a series of stories across the U.S. and got us wondering, 
Remember what the Adams County coroner told us? Should name oppose use of the term excited delirium, it would follow accordingly? No word, at least as of now, what accordingly might mean in an office that hasn't been shy about using the term in cases like the one involving Paul Egley. We've reached out for comment repeatedly from the Adams County Coroner's Office and have yet to hear back. While the initial autopsy of Elijah McLean included the words excited delirium, those words never made it into the amended autopsy. It's not clear why.